running light. My daughter's taxi company exactly a quarter past. Where were oh, sorry, they? Sorry, lady, I can't. I don't care what you've got to say, okay? That's no way to run a business. They'll go broke. And a good thing, too. Oh, now she decides to come. Ignore her, get going. You can't wait two minutes! I said exactly a quarter past. Not any time that takes your fancy. But it's two lousy minutes! Maria, that's how you go broke. Oh, you, you are broke! Me. Go! Move! Oh, you that's a late nutcase! Down here. Is there a law against that? There should be a law against that. Look, it's Mr. Luverche, Cosimo Luverche. What? Oh, you mean at the restaurant? What? What, what restaurant? Luverche. It's an Italian restaurant on the point. It's, uh, well, it's modern Italian. Well, what's the difference between Italian and modern Italian? Oh, about 12 bucks a plate. Uh, his injuries are consistent with a mighty long drop. Oh, yeah? How long ago? Still warm. A couple of hours, maybe. Yeah, anything sus about it? No, Think? nothing I can see at the moment. Now, that's got to be where he's fallen from. Oh, man, if I saw that thing coming at me, I reckon I'd jump too. I would. Uh, his wife's name's Antonella. Yeah. Look, it is him. Ah, oh, Cosimo Luvece. He does the best salt and bocca. Now, this is more my speed. Horses. Oh, veal, sage, prosciutto. Sultan Bocco translates as jump in the mouth, and let me tell you, this guy's Sultan Bocco, the sage just hits you right in the mouth. It's beautiful. How much? The yeah. about 40 bucks. That's What's wrong with that? Well, what, for a special occasion? Yeah. What were you telling me you don't have special occasions? Yeah, I'll do put beetroot in my. I'm sorry. I was laying down. Oh, that's fine, Mrs. Luvetche. This is Detective Sinclair. <laughs> Mrs. Luvetche, I'm very sorry. Thank you. So am I. Um, would you mind if my partner and I had a look up on the veranda? No. This way. Where are you? This a grandchild, Mrs. Luvetche? No. So was the dog on the balcony when you got home? <coughs> yes. Looks like your husband was grooming the dog. Is there any possibility you tried to attack him? Definitely not. 
Senor Nero hates just about everybody, including me. But he loves my husband, adores him. Adored him. Please, the fall here, he wouldn't have suffered. I wouldn't have thought so. I'm glad because he suffered enough. My husband had terminal cancer. He had four or five weeks to live. He was going home to Italy next week to die. Thank you, gentlemen. La mia cara filia. Come here. Two minutes, Mum. You couldn't wait. Two lousy minutes. Shut up! You see? He hates nearly everybody. Cara, Bella, come. First things first. You couldn't wait two minutes? These people are from the police. Detective Riley, Sinclair. Our daughter, Maria. I'm two minutes late to pick up my own mother and she grabs another taxi. I'm sorry. I... Oh, Mum's always sorry. She's a very sorry person. Aren't you, Mum? What happened to Dad? We believe your father may have fallen from this top balcony. That's Dad. He didn't know the word small. I'm sorry? Cancer had to be terminal. He had to travel 10,000 k's back to Italy to die. I'll tell you what's happened. He's had a look over the edge. What's bigger than getting on a plane to die? Flying without a plane. He jumped. That's what he did. Isn't it? Mrs. Leverchair, could that be possible? Killed himself. Mama! Cara. This is our other daughter, Katarina. Senor Nero, he seems to love and adore someone else. She's her father's daughter. Small isn't in her vocabulary either. Ladies, please. Gentlemen, dog's been restrained. Let's seal this entire area off. So what will happen to Senor Nero now? Oh, I live here. I'll look after him, won't I? Papa only found him in the pound ten days ago. It was love at first sight. Don't know why he bonded with me. Hey, I manage the restaurant, so maybe he sends the food. Yeah, maybe. Katarina, do you believe your father could have committed suicide? He did love a good surprise, didn't he? Didn't he? Hey, Donna, got any mail for me? Oh, from the police academy? Yeah. No. The course doesn't right. start for another couple of months, Gavin. Yeah, I know. It'd just be nice to know whether I got accepted or not, you know? I mean, you know, it's important to get these communication skills down. So you can course. be succinct when you order people around. Well, he's fallen from the top balcony right on down to the stairs. Doesn't look like there's any foul play at this stage, though. Suicide? That seems to be the consensus. Yeah, we told Chopper about the cancer. Yeah, I think I would have taken the first class trip to Rome. Gee, it's a pity. Nice restaurant, apparently. Nearly went there once. Foodie's been there? Yeah, quite a few times, actually. I'm not in the party. No, hang on. A what? What, what? what did you just call me? What, a foodie? A foodie? What, what, what the hell's a foodie? No, what is it? What, because I like a good restaurant. Because oh. I read up on restaurant. That, that makes me a foodie. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Hey, shopper. Hi. Just about to ring you. Who said the deceased had cancer? Well, the mother, the two daughters. Started in the lungs, apparently went to the bones, and what, he had four or five weeks to live? No. No? Mm. It's as healthy as any of us. What, no cancer? Sorry. You got any other minor bombshells, Chopper? Hmm, look at this. Wound there at the base of the skull that's inconsistent with his other injuries. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Uh, that would have been caused by an upward swing. Okay. Sort of. Poof. What are you saying? He was smashed in the back of the head before he fell? Exactly. It's a homicide. People, people, gather, gather, please. This is Terry Mears, whose company supplied us with the rigid inflatable. This is uh, Senior Sergeant Roth, Constable Woods, Senior Constable G'day. Quinn, and Senior Constable G'day. Sykes. Over the next few days, Mr. Mears will be uh, 
talking about the RIB's capabilities in terms of an anti-terrorist vessel and talking about the strategies used by the Tactical Response Group. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we're all looking forward to it, sir. Right. Where do you want to start? At the top, sir. Guys, call me Terry. Well, welcome aboard, Terry. I sense an understandable reluctance. Hey, I read you. What's this desk sailor doing teaching water police tactics? Nah, nothing of the sort. That's the way, Gavin. OK, let's all meet up in the muffler room, shall we? After you, Terry. We tried training SPG guys in tactical responses using the RIBs. You haven't seen a sadder sight. Yeah, well, that stands to a reason. <laughs> I'm a landlubber. I can grasp the concept of port and starboard. You reckon these SPG guys could? Turn port. No, left. The other left? <laughs> oh, you're feeling seasick. Kindly chunder downwind. <laughs> so I said, what are we doing wasting our time? Why don't we go to the experts, the pros? You guys. So, here I am. Here we are. Turn around, mate. You might learn something. Here. Now, this is the basis of everything we're going to talk about today. Three little letters. Don't ever forget them. R-H-A. What does that stand for? Really hairy asshole. <laughs> and you'd know, wouldn't you? Risk hazard analysis. That is, the science of the relationship between the chance of an event occurring and the consequences of that event. Science. When we get out in the water. You'll get there when you're ready. All right. OK, whatever hit him was rectangular, convex on the longer sides, probably metal. There was some dog grooming paraphernalia on the veranda, but choppers ruled that out. Crime scene haven't found anything. We've got divers checking the waters in the vicinity. Small matter of the disappearing cancer, of course. Yeah, well, that's the mind-boggler. Why would a family lie about such a thing? Establish a viable reason for suicide. Yeah, but they've got to understand that there's going to be a post-mortem at some point or another. Not necessarily, Mick. OK, if they're just liars, they are incredibly thorough. I mean, Mrs Lovetcher, she's given me the name and number of her husband's specialist. Where's the start? Get onto that one, Helen. Go on, back off! Go on! Hit! But I went with Cosimo to the specialist. Many times. And Cosimo went just this morning. On his own? I had to meet with the lady who makes the pasta. Cosmo said I should. Life had to go on. So you didn't see your husband after the specialist? No. I next saw him... ..when I found him. This is so impossible. The post-mortem suggests that your husband was murdered. Absolutely not. Impossible. Did your husband have a will? Of course he had a will. Were you aware of the details of the I'm, will? I'm not sure. I, I would think that everything is evenly divided. Is this Jim Ignatowski, the chef, with your husband? Yes. They had a fairly spectacular falling out, didn't they? That's none of your business. Yeah, g'day, yeah, Weaver. Bobby Weaver, yeah. made of Cosmos. He's Detective Riley, that's Detective Sinclair. Used to race horses and stuff, yeah. I mean, uh, I just got your message. What the hell happened? These people, police, they said that Cosmo didn't have cancer. Didn't have cancer? Because he bloody did. <laughs> Wait, I'm, the, I'm the one who sent him to the specialist. I'm, I'm a vet, right? I'm, I may not know much about the human condition, but I knew cancer signs. You're off your head. The post-mortem found no traces of cancer, Mr Weaver. Yes, I'll be buggered. It also revealed that he'd been struck on the back of the head before he fell off the balcony. Oh, shit. Would any of you people know of anyone who would have reason to do this to him? No, he had no enemies. I, I can't honestly think of anyone. No one. No enemies. What about Jim Ignatowski? Had they resolved their differences? Well, uh, put it this way, um, Cosimo probably had, yeah, but uh, Jim, he... he bears a grudge. These creative types do, from what I gather. It was splashed all over the food section of the newspaper. Jim Ignatowski, he wanted to put out his own cookbook. But Cosimo Levecchia, he wanted a percentage on the basis that, well, the recipes were created in his kitchen, right? So Jim's a possible count. Yeah, well worth a look. I was bitten by one of those when I was a kid. Can't stand the things. OK, so the dog had to be on the veranda when the victim was hit and presumably pushed. Yeah, so the killer had to go past the dog to do the deed. So the only other person the dog hasn't tried to bite so far is one of the daughters, Katarina. Katarina. Unless someone drugged the dog. Like a vet. Sorry to bother you again, Mrs Luvetcher. We're looking for Mr Weaver. In the office. 
Thank you for your time, ma'am. What, do you need some help to tear this place apart, Mr Weaver? Hey, tear the place? Oh, no, 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 just a bit of a hurry, that's all. You know, looking for some paperwork to do with one of the horses. Gave it to Cosimo to, um... Hey, listen, Antonella, you leave everything to me, all right? All the paperwork and stuff, I'll fix everything up. Mr Weaver, say you uh, drugged a dog to sleep. How long would it take for the dog to uh, come to? Oh, that depends. Uh, fully sedated? It'd be an hour or so, yeah. Of course, your doggy'd be groggy for about, all oh, 10, 12 hours after that. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So, what's the essential element to be considered when assessing hit-kill probability? Did I hear someone say ballistic applications? Got it in one. Ballistic applications are essential when assessing hit-kill probability. And when the hell are we supposed to make all these calculations? Wait, aren't you listening? Yeah. It's before we go out. Right, Come on, you on. know we get called straight out. Yeah, we don't get noticed, we're called, we're hey, out Hey, guys, I think we're getting our wires crossed here. What you're talking about is normal daily yeah. water police operations. What I'm outlining is anti-terrorist procedure. Yeah, and the terrorists are just going to tread water while we make calculations. <laughs> yeah. Bear with me. <laughs> Question? Statement. I need to take a leak. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mick, it's confirmed. If the dog had been drugged, it would have been drowsy for 12 hours. So that means that someone got past the dog without being attacked? That's right. You better prepare yourself for this one. One month ago, Mr Lavecci was riddled with cancer. After this morning's examination, his specialist can't find a thing. Bullshit. Bullshit. So how can cancer just disappear without a trace? It does happen. It's a rare kind of remission, but no, no it does happen. I'll be blind. Huh. Mr. Lavecci left the doctor's surgery at 9.15. 9.15, that means he was killed between 9.15 and 11 a.m. And he said to his doctor, and I quote, this changes everything. Oh, I wonder what that means. I want to know who he told his good news to. Yeah, exactly. Someone who's been just waiting for him to die, finds out that he's not, decides to do the deed himself. Yeah. We were thinking of inheritance as a motive. Now, these files came out of Cosimo's office, OK? His will's got to be in here somewhere, and him being a businessman mean that these files are bound to turn up one or two enemies. Yeah, and I reckon whoever went through these files would deserve a great big bottle of champagne. And a dinner for two. How about movies? Mm. No worries. <laughs> That's great. Now, let's go and see Katarina. Yeah, the only one that can get past that savage dog. Ignatowski, can I say how much I enjoy your cooking? It's Jim. I thought you said his name was Stronzo. <laughs> nah, Stronzo's Italian for shithead. <laughs> the new chef, Vincenzo someone. Vincenzo Bellini. Vincenzo shithead. He's hopeless. Italian food has got to be simple. Huh? You let the ingredients sing. Am I Italian? No. But do I understand the food? You bet. He's Italian. Understand the food? No way. You've eaten my food? Yes, I have. What'd you have? Salt and bocca. Oh, it's my signature dish. It was delicious. Now, tell me, when was the last time you saw Cosimo Luvece? Oh, months ago. I mean, that was simple, right? It wasn't mucked up with bits of bloody asparagus and shit like that. <clears throat> um, but you were still in dispute with him over the cookbook? My lawyer talked to his lawyer. And you still expected to get the restaurant? He promised. He, he swore. <clears throat> Did you know his cancer was cured? Rubbish. He was dying. He told me it was killing him. So where were you between 9.30 and 11 this morning? You think I killed him? 
We've been told that he doesn't have an enemy in the world, but you're the closest thing to it at this stage. I was where I am every morning, produce markets. He didn't have an enemy in the world. Who told you that bullshit? Of course he had enemies. If I was that kind of person. Can you remember any names? No. He didn't bring his business home. Yeah, but you worked with him. You managed the restaurant. Manage. It's a loose term. Look, in all honesty, I handle greeting and seating. You walk in, I greet you and take you to your table. So you weren't privy to any of your father's business dealings at all? None. Papa was old school Italian. You know, I had to look beautiful and, and smile. So do you know anyone who might have an idea of his dealings? Your mother? I doubt it. Italian old school. You could ask Bobby Weaver. Him and Dab are best mates. Yeah, we will. Did your father tell you that his cancer had gone? No. I left home at 7am and I didn't see him after that. So where were you this morning? You are joking. No, I'm not. It's a standard question, Katerina. It doesn't mean I can't resent it. So? I was here. I was here until my mother called. I, w I was mending curtains. Very Italian old school, my papa. I don't, I don't wish to take the matter with Jim any further. Why not? I would. Jim gets fiery. He, you know, he doesn't mean anything by it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Now remember, if these laser receptions start screaming, you're dead. Okay, revision. What's the maximum effective range of a pistol? 50 metres. I thought no one was listening. Effective range of a sniper weapon? 1,100. 12. 12. 11. Bloody 12. It's 1,500 metres. 1,500 metres. Imagine what a high-powered sniper bullet's going to do to your skull. We're just past the 90% probable appearance time. I think we're wasting our time. Maybe they're not coming. Don't they teach manners at terrorists? Green 9-0. Range 800 metres. OK, let's go, people. Let's go. Come on, move it. How do you feel? Slipping those blokes into the back door was a bloody cheap trick. Yeah, it was a cheap trick. Yeah! Right. So what are you all smug about then, huh? Because cheap tricks are for smart asses. What are tactics, Sykes? We're not talking tactics here, we're talking cheap tricks. By your own admission. So you don't even know what tactics are, do you, fella? They're tricks. Clever tricks. Inspired tricks. Your choices are only limited by your opponent's capability, and your capability out there was zilch. You might be able to drive a boat, Sykes, but that's as far as your potential goes. <laughs> and she doesn't want to lay a complaint, even though she was threatened with a knife, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's right, Chief, but I don't know why. Okay, maybe she's used to it. I, don't, I just don't know why. Right, right. All right, Ronnie. Let me just get a handle on this. The whole cornerstone of this investigation, it 
It revolves around a savage dog. Is, is that correct? You haven't met this dog. Yeah, listen, listen Katarina, now she can get past this dog, okay? So that's opportunity. But she doesn't have motive. But this fella, Jim Ignatowski, now he's got motive. Yeah, so we run him past the dog, see how it reacts. I mean, if it goes him, then we're back to square one. If it doesn't, we've got motive and opportunity. Yeah, you run him past the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust us, it's all right. Helen, this whole dog business is a bit dodgy, isn't it? Uh, no. What have we come here for? Curiosity, mate. Could you walk towards the house, please, Mr. Ignatowski? You want to watch me walk? That's right. You're crazy, you know that. You love your food, but you're crazy. Hey, uh, you want some cooking lessons? Right. The front door, please. Bloody mad woman, huh? Exactly. Oh. 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 Uh, yeah, Mick, Mick Helen here. Listen, I've waded through all of the Vetchie's files. Look, they're mostly horsey papers. I'm going to have to call licensing. I don't know anything about harness racing. OK. Did you find a will? Uh, no, I didn't. And uh, the solicitor's in Melbourne. I've left a message. Also, look, there's another daughter. Her name's Maria. She's uh, living at home. Yeah, I know. Yeah, both daughters do. OK, well, I've got a letter from a solicitor to... Mick, what? Live, Mick? Yeah? What's your excuse? What are you doing? Do you daughter? mind, Maria? Yeah, I do mind. Piss off. Right, OK. I got a letter from a solicitor dated last week. It was sent to her. Listen to this. Due to her rudeness, complete lack of skill, business acumen and commitment, her father was withdrawing his funds from her water taxi business and she was to get out of home. Yeah, OK. Thank you very, very much. How are you today, Maria? Oh, terrific. Did you know your father's cancer had disappeared, Maria? Mum told me. Pretty weird. Unusual. So your father didn't tell you? How could he? I didn't see him. I went to work before he went to the specialist. When was the last time you saw him? Alive? Last night. And how was that? Fine. Why? Well, didn't you receive a, a letter from his solicitor? Last week at home? Withdrawing his funds from your business. And asking you to leave the house? Maria. It's our information, true or false? Who told you? Was it Katarina? Sit down, Maria. I'm not staying. Was it Mum? Did Mum tell you? Does it matter that we know? Because if it was Katarina, did she tell you that she's rooting Jim Ignatowski and that they want to run the restaurant together? You yeah, bet she didn't. Or if it was Mum, did she tell you that she's rooting Bobby Weaver? Yeah, I bet she didn't. You know Italian opera? Non-stop sex? Dead bodies everywhere? Hey, our family's an Italian opera. See you later. Not. Hey, Maria. Nah, no, Mick, 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 Mick. Leave her. God, information overload. OK, look, let's just think about this. She has motive, but she doesn't have opportunity. She couldn't get past the dog. It tried to kill her too. Yeah, right. Then on the other hand, we've got Katarina and Jim Ignatowski, right? They have motive they and have opportunity. opportunity. They both want the restaurant. Oh. Is it just me or is this family exhausting? No, it's just you. Oh. Oh, yeah. Where it fits, mate. Hang on a sec. I've got something for you. Yeah, I was looking for this. Hope you appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Hey, great, thanks. From him. Look. Relationship you want to test first? Big Bobby Weaver and Mrs. Lovetje, or Katarina and Jimmy Gutowski? Well, I think Katarina and Jim, because they seem like the likely two that could have got past the savage dog. Yep, right. Tactics. He's using tactics on you. Same as yesterday. He sprung those blokes from behind. Well, us. this is getting personal, and I don't need this. Mate, this is only personal because you've let him make it personal. You've let him jam it so far up you it's blocking your sinuses. Jam something up him. Okay, you got any suggestions then? Oh. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Helen. You owe me. Dinner at Lever Chase on her. Licensing came through with some information on the deceased's harness racing activities. 
He and his partner, Bobby Weaver, are the subject of a race rigging inquiry. There's money and bookmakers involved, oh, the whole thing. What shebang. do you know? You're a legend, Helen. Dinner. Oh, good morning, Mr. Weaver. Oh, good day. Hey, uh, sorry about the pong here. It's, uh, it's horse manure. Nothing goes to waste around here. Are you married, Mr. Weaver? Uh, no. No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a widower. I lost my wife to cancer about five years ago. Hey, there's a funny thing, isn't it? Uh, the big fella upstairs, he cures Cosimo's cancer a few hours before somebody kills him. You'd have to say God's got a warped sense of humour, wouldn't you? Sure. Hey, no, I'd step back if I was you. This is going to get a bit sloppy here. Uh, Mr. Weaver, a witness says you're having a relationship with Antonella Luvece. <laughs> <laughs> You've been talking to Maria, haven't you? Now, come on, you have, eh? She's accused me to my face. And Antonella. I don't know if you've noticed it, but uh, Maria's like a biscuit short of a packet. Never got over the fact that she wasn't a boy. And how's that? Well, uh, Cosimo and Antonella's first child was a boy. Died of leukaemia. Oh, is that the photo in the house of the boy about two? Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, you know, they had Katerina, but they, uh, they wanted a boy, but they got Maria, and she was about nine years old when she realised she was a mistake, and it's been war between them ever since. Look out. Um, just, just one other no, thing, Mr. Me, Alex, uh, what's going on here? Well, it's a veggie garden. No, no, it's a veggie garden, but nothing's going to grow. It's underneath a tree. This other thing, Mr. Weaver, yours and Mr. Levetche's problem with a race rigging inquiry? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You Blake sure do talk to the wrong people. What, the licensing enforcement agency? Oh, all right, look. We had a first starter from New Zealand, right? Uh, he cost us a packet, monkeys jumped from trees to back him, and he ran second last. So a few rumours started going around the industry, jealousy sticks its bibbing, next thing you know, we're master criminals. I mean, so much crap, end of story. Can I ask you one more question? Where were you yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning? Oh, this is getting ridiculous. I was having coffee with a mate. Muzzer, Murray Slocum. One Murray Slocum confirms his mate Bobby Weaver was with him from just after nine to almost noon. It's a lot of coffee. Oh, it's still an alibi, Alex. Yeah, let's go and see what Katarina's got to say about having a relationship with Jim Ignatowski. Sure. She had to go, quickly. And where did she go? Home. Uh, she got the telephone call. OK, Mr Bellini, were you here at the restaurant between 9.30 and 11 yesterday morning? Why? Did you see Katerina here? Ah, this is uh, when Mr Luvecci uh, was uh, killed, huh? That's right. No. No? No! What, you're saying she was not here? See. Si. That's what I said. She was not here. Katerina was not here. Si, si. Si, si. Thank you, Mr. Bellini. Yeah. Very good. Here, Prego, you too, mate. OK, intelligence reports there's an 88% probability of terrorist activity within the next six minutes. As leader of this merry crew, I propose we maintain extreme vigilance. You got a problem with that, Gavin? Another one, sir. Good start. And I'm Terry. I thought we established that. No, no, you'll always be certain of me, sir. <laughs> OK. Well, we could sit around here on our asses all day, or I say we patrol. Um, sorry. Uh, isn't this the position that intelligence indicates we should maintain? Sure. What if intelligence is wrong? Then you're challenging expert analysis. Inspired tactics, Gavin. Intelligence experts fart and scratch just like the rest of us. If we can be wrong, so can they. And I say we patrol. Any further objections? You're in charge, sir. OK, let's go. OK, this is good. What? This is our proposed surveillance position That's here? right. But doesn't that make us sitting ducks? Do the unexpected. Throw the enemy off its axis. OK. Can you hear another couple? I'm looking forward to it, Gav. Never underestimate initiative. And I like to take your rear vision mirror. <laughs> Woo! Very clever. Very, very clever. You started, I'll finish it, pal. <laughs> it's 
Katarina's car. Miss Lovetje? Katarina? It's the police, Mrs. Lovetje. Katarina, Vic. You all right? What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay, take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Let's have a look. Alex, call it in. I want my money now. Get in the taxi. It's your father's money. It's Maria. I deserve it. I want mine. I want what's mine. Maria, come. Get in the taxi, Mum. Yeah, Donna. Listen, um, there's a bit of baseball action over at the Louvertier's house. Can you maybe send over some backup? Maria! Maria, it's free! Stop put that back there. Maria! You put that back down! What are you doing here? Put it down! Maria, stop it! You're gonna be fine, right? Be back in one minute. One minute. Put it down! Put the back there! Put it down! Put that back there! Get out of my house! Put it down, I said! Oh, dear God. Please. Mr. Nero, stop. Get out of my house. Put the back down. No, I'm not putting it Put down. Put it down. There's a good boy. There's a big good boy. Oh, God, oh, God, oh. Don't go, Riley. I will shoot. Don't think I won't shoot you. Get her out. Get her out of there. Oh, just get out of my face. My God. Get out of my face. What happened? I mean, wh what did you do? I didn't do anything. What do you mean, nothing? That's... I didn't do anything. He just kind of collapsed. What do you mean? Like, what, what? Did he have a heart attack? Is he dead? I think he's dead since he's asleep. He's <laughs> asleep? He's asleep. <laughs> oh, you all right? Yeah. Thanks. Let's justify the unjustifiable, shall we? Well, in a frontline situation, sir, anything goes. Frontline, I think that's a military term, isn't it? Science, what are you talking about? This is just a case of lousy attitude, son. No, sir. There was a war on and the death sailor started. So he challenged my leadership abilities. He sunk the boot in with some gutter tactics. Now, maybe that's all part of the test. I don't know. But I only gave him back what he gave me. And I'd do it again, sir, because whenever I have to prove myself, I will. Finished? Sir? I want to report this incident on my desk at the end of shift. And I want the name of everybody involved. So I'd just like to make it perfectly clear that I alone take the responsibility for this. Fine. Tracking device on the boat, was it? Sir? Oh, how else would the divers track you down? Brock! That little lot wouldn't happen to be on the way to the uh, divers at the San Sushi Water Police, would it? In return for a tracking device and a little help from your friends? Oh, I think I'd have to deny that, sir. Is that right? Now, why wouldn't I be surprised? I have no complaints against Maria. We were going shopping. Mrs. Louvet, we're going shopping. Shopping? Mm. You usually talk your mother into going shopping with a baseball bat, do you? Well, maybe I thought about sinking the taxi and drowning us, and then I changed my mind. We were going shopping. I tripped over the ottoman and hit my head. Silly, really. Yeah, really silly. We've been told that you weren't at the restaurant at the time of your father's death. Your information's wrong. So who saw you there? Only Vincenzo, the chef. <laughs> He's only been out from Italy for a couple of months. His English is pretty ordinary. <laughs> Probably misunderstood you. Can you help me with something? You know, your mother and Maria, they were going shopping, were they? Mama says they were. They were. Marco, what? Narcolepsy. You know, it's a malfunction of the waking centre of the brain. Some humans get it and about two or three breeds of dogs get it. Look, the police vet says it just makes them fall asleep instantly, anywhere, anytime. What? Mid-scribe. 
mid-attack. Yep, barking. Excitement brings it on, apparently. And the sleeping can last for, like, you know, 10 seconds to 10 minutes, however long it takes for it to pass. <sighs> right, OK. Now, assuming that this dog has got this narco thing, I mean, that means anybody could have got by. Yeah. Right. Well, I want you both to go back to the beginning, and I want you to find the murderer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Narco lips. What is going on there? Mamma mia. <laughs>